in many ways, we talk about how this nation was founded on the principles of equality and justice for all. But we also recognize that in many ways, this nation was founded on practices of discrimination and racism. And that has continued to this day and we're seeing it boiling over in the present moment. Uh, there are many ways in which race issues are manifesting themselves in our country right now. If we look at the protests in Charlotte and the, the police killings of young black men, or if we look at the rhetoric around uh, anti-Muslim sentiment and the criminalization of people simply because of how they look or what they believe. These sorts of things are issues that we like to think don't exist in our society today, but we can't help but notice that they really do and we need to confront them now. I think one of the real challenges we're facing in our society is a tendency to try and paint entire communities with a single brush stroke. You know, we like to think that all people of a community are the same, even though when we look closely, we recognize that each community is diverse. No one's a monolith, no community's a monolith. And so what I like to do in my classroom or in my advocacy or even when I'm out on the street is try and demonstrate the differences that exist within these communities by challenging basic stereotypes. You know, so when I walk onto an airplane and people are looking at me with fear and funny looks, um, I strike up conversations and smile and laugh and eventually pull out pictures of my daughter so that they can see that I'm just a normal person, right? And that challenges their stereotypes. One of the things I try and do in my classroom is try and show students that there are multiple different ways of looking at everything. Everyone has their own experiences. Everyone has their own perspectives. And if we can try and understand where people are coming from with empathy, with sort of a human element, then that allows us to really engage with difference in a way that is constructive rather than destructive. So that's probably the most powerful way in which I bring this into the classroom. The other thing that I try and do in my classroom is deal with argumentation so that students can look at the ways in which people mobilize different arguments or propaganda as a way of gaining power. And so we look at uses of speech, we look at uses of media, we look at dog whistles in political debates and see how these sorts of, how these aspects of, or methods of fear mongering contribute to the garnering of political power, things along those lines. That seems to be a, a very useful technique for helping students understand both what's going on in our world, but also how they can themselves interpret and engage with what they're encountering.